Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. A square with side length x and a circle with radius r are inscribed in a semicircle with radius 1 as shown above. And by the way, I forgot to write the radius there. Fine. So let's go ahead and write it down. So the radius of the semicircle is 1. Find x in terms of r. All right, at this point, you may want to just pause the video and try this problem yourself first. Okay, let's get started. So we know that the side length for the square is x. So let's go ahead and write that down here and here. And then we know that the radius of the circle is r, the green one. So let's go ahead and make some connections. So first of all, I'm going to draw the radius here. And then from the center of the semicircle, I'm just going to connect these two centers. Okay. And then that'll be helpful. And then I'll be making a couple more connections. I think this will also be help helpful. Let's go ahead and connect the... Because what we're trying to do here is actually we're trying to take advantage of the fact that the radius of the semicircle is given. So if we can use that to our advantage, that would be nice. So I can just go ahead and connect these as well. Since they're given, right? Those points are given. Okay, cool. So now this is R. This is the center of our semicircle. This is R and this is R. Okay, cool. What else do I know? Well, we have to uh, designate some lengths here. So let's say that this is A. Okay. So then we have a little piece here, right? Okay. So what's going to happen if, if that's A and we know that this is R right here. So this is going to be li this little piece here and which we're going to use that, right? That's going to be R minus A. Okay, R minus A. Okay, cool. Now, what do we know about all these variables? First of all, we kind of need to figure out what A is, right, in terms of R, because we need to be able to associate that, and then once we get it, we can kind of use the X. Because our goal is to find X in terms of R, so we kind of need to get rid of A here. Make sense? That's the idea. Well, this is also R, nice. And we know that the radius of the semicircle is one, so this length here would be 1 minus r, which is cool because now this gives us a right triangle that we can use, right? Right, okay. So here's the Pythagorean theorem coming to the rescue. Okay, awesome. So we're we can write from here a squared plus r squared is equal to 1 minus r quantity squared. And what I can do is I can actually solve for, solve for r here, I mean a. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 minus 2r plus r squared. r squared cancels out. And what I can do is I can actually square root both sides and a will be equal to the square root of 1 minus 2r. Now that's important because we're going to be using that in our equations and we need to associate x and r. So we need to get rid of a. And we did. Awesome. Now, we're going to be writing the Pythagorean theorem one more time. This time we're going to be using another right triangle which is this one. Let me go ahead and dot that triangle so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. We have this big right triangle here that we're going to use. Let's go ahead and write our second relationship. Okay. Awesome. Now, what we can say from here is the hypotenuse is one, right? Which is the radius of the semicircle. And the legs are, the height is X. The base is X plus R minus A. Okay. So, it's, it goes like this, x squared plus x plus r minus a squared is equal to 1, because the hypotenuse is 1, as you know. Cool. Now, we're going to replace, we're going to replace a with what it is. Let's go ahead and do that. So, we get x squared plus x plus r minus the square root of 1 minus 2r, and then the whole thing will be squared, and the sum is equal to 1. Nice. Now, this equation might be a little intimidating to solve because, first of all, think about it. This is a quadratic in x, but we're also going to be getting a lot of r terms. Some of them are going to be radicals, products, so on and so forth. So to make this a little easier on ourselves, we can just go ahead and do this. This, this thing here, like the, the stuff that contains r, what I can do is I can actually go ahead and call that u. And you know that I love u substitution, right? Not just for integrals, but for any algebraic problem. It's cool because it really simplifies the process. You know, 
it's going to save you a lot of time. You don't have to write those radicals and other stuff uh, every step. Okay, so this is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and do that. So I replace that thing with, which is r minus square root of 1 minus 2r with u. So I get that simpler equation. If you expand it and combine like terms, you should be getting something like this. And notice that u is not in terms of x. So we're good. Uh, we get a quadratic. And then this gives us u squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Nice. I still don't need to replace u with what it is. That's not the goal. I'm going to go all the way to the end. So use this quadratic equation to solve in terms of u, and then I will do the substitution later. Make sense? Okay, I think it's going to help us a lot. So let me go ahead and set up the equation here. So that should be x equals negative b plus minus. We'll have enough, enough complications without the r, don't worry. So b squared is going to be 4u squared minus 4ac. That's going to be u squared minus 1. And then the whole thing will be divided by 2a, which is 4. Awesome. We can definitely simplify this. Let's go ahead and do that. Negative 2u, 2u. Okay. It's like happy birthday song every time. Okay, so we get 4u squared minus. We're going to be getting a minus 8u squared from here. And then negative 8 times negative 1 is going to give us positive 1, obviously, because the expression under the radical could not be negative, right? Obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't have real solutions. Okay. Let's see what this gives us. Well, it's going to give us the square root of 8 minus. So if you go ahead and simplify this part, and I can just go ahead and write it as 8 minus 4u squared. And as you know, we can take out a 4 there, right? So we can kind of do this 4 times 2 minus u squared, which is going to help us a lot. Let's go ahead and do that, right? Okay. Nice. And then I just divide the whole thing by 4. Now, what is the point of doing all this factoring and stuff? Well, I want to simplify this expression as much as I can because I'm going to have to back substitute you at some point, right? So I want to make it as easy as possible. That's why I'm going through all these things. And what we can do here is actually because we have a 4 under the radical, we can actually take that out. And then once we take that out, our expression is going to be simpler because there will be a common factor, right? So we're going to take advantage of that greatest common factor and then simplify this as much as possible. And then we're going to split up our solutions and replace u with what it is. And of course, u is in terms of r. That way, at the end, x will be in terms of r. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Let's go ahead and proceed. Now, what am I going to do next? Simplify this. So take out the 4. So that's going to give me negative 2u plus minus 2 times the square root of 2 minus u squared. Don't worry, this is going to simplify and it's going to become better. Now what I can do is I can just go ahead and divide everything by 2. And that will look like negative u plus minus the square root of 2 minus u squared all over Two, because I'm dividing everything, including the denominator, by 2. Awesome. We got a really nice result. And imagine what would happen if you were using the u every time in this expression, like u would equal this expression right here, r minus the square root of something. Imagine squaring that and then plugging it in and simplifying it, multiply by 4, multiply by negative 8, then combine them, so on and so forth. So this avoids a lot of troubles. So the power of substitution one more time. Okay, I just want to emphasize that because I love substitution. Okay, and you know that in polynomial equations and in radical equations and all other equations, substitution works miracles. Okay, anyways, so what are we going to do from this point on? We're going to go ahead and back substitute. But at the same time, when I do that, I also want to replace u with what it is, right? Okay, so what is u? Let me go ahead and take note of that here so that you can easily associate that u was equal to r minus the square root of 1 minus 2r. Not too bad, right? Okay, so that really simplifies the process as you see. So, I'm going to split it up into minus and plus, and then we have to decide which one is going to work. And I'm going to tell you one of them doesn't work, and I'll tell you the reason. So, make sure to watch till the end. Okay? Just hang in there. So, my first solution is going to be, which one do you want to go with first? Well, I want to go with the positive one first because I'm a positive person in general, 
all most of the time. So it's going to look like this, negative u. What is negative u? You have to negate it. So it's kind of like switched around, right? So I'm going to write it like this. Obviously, if u is positive, then negative u is going to be negative, but who cares, right? So this is negative u, the opposite of u. Plus, I'm going to go with the positive version, right? 2 minus u squared. Now, here's one thing you could do. You could actually square the u here and then uh, replace uh, u squared with what it is and then even subtract it, subtract it from 2. That would really helpful. That would really be helpful, right? So we can actually go ahead and do that here. Let's go ahead and square u and then I think it'll be a better process. So let me go ahead and delete this, erase that, and let me go ahead and do this first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate 2 minus u squared. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 2 minus u squared is equal to 2 minus this expression squared. Awesome. All right. So now let's see what this takes us, uh, where this takes us, okay? See what happens. So this is going to be 2 minus. The quantity will be squared inside, so it's going to be r squared, right? Minus, now I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together, 2ab. So that's going to look like this, right? 2ab plus b squared. And b squared is just going to be, you know, the thing without the radical. Awesome. Now we can just go ahead and do a little bit of simplifying here. But the only thing we're going to get from here is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1, obviously. So we're going to be getting a 1 from here, right? It's going to give us a 1. And then we're going to be getting an r squared. Then we're going to be getting a plus 2r, okay? And then... We're going to be getting plus 2 times square root of 1 minus 2r multiplied by r. I guess I could leave the radical for the last part, but that's okay. Either way. So this is 2 minus u squared, obviously, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in a nicer way. Mm -hmm. There's no really nicer way, but I guess we could probably just write it like this with the, uh, the r term first, right? So I can just go ahead and write it as negative r squared plus 2r plus 1, sort of like making it like a polynomial, and then writing the radical term, and also leaving the radical at the end. So it just looks a little better, I think, this way, putting the rational term at the end. I mean irrational. Okay, so this is 2 minus u squared. That's important to know, right? 2 minus u squared is equal to this. Now what I can do is I can just go ahead and substitute everything there, with the plus minus versions and we should be good to go. Okay, so this is gonna give me what? Negative u, negative u is the opposite. Remember, we talked about that before and this will be our negative u plus the square root of two minus u squared, which is this whole expression. I'm gonna write that inside the radical. You see, that's kind of gigantic. That's why I wanted to use substitution here because, you know, that will be troublesome. Okay, awesome, this whole thing is radicalized and then just go ahead and divide it by 2. Awesome. This is our positive version. And then we're going to go ahead and write the negative one underneath and then we'll talk about which one is acceptable. Okay. The only thing that changes here, by the way, is the part after negative u. So right after the minus r here, we're going to insert that plus sign. Okay. I mean the minus sign in this case. That was a plus sign. Now it is a minus sign. So I can kind of go ahead and Maybe emphasize this a little bit. And so kind of like write it in uh, maybe different colors like this. So this one was a positive. This one is going to be a negative. Okay? All right. And everything else will be basically the same thing. Awesome. Great. Great job, Pen. Okay. So now this is going to be a minus sign. And then see, it just switches over to the eraser for some reason. Anyways, square root of negative r squared plus 2r plus 1, that our, that expression is going to be stay there. Everything under the radical is actually the outside radical, the big one, the long one, is going to stay the same. And all over 2. Cool. We're almost done here. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. So we have two expressions here. And which one are we going to pick? Well, if you look at the second one, we have a lot of negative terms, right? So what's going to happen is if you use the second one, you're going to be getting a negative value. And I tested it for you guys, which we're not going to get into the details here. But for r equals one third, for r equals one half, for a couple values of r, 
I tested both of these values for you and I verified that the second one is actually gives us uh, a negative value. So it's not acceptable. And the first one is actually valid. So it works. Uh, it's all good. So what we're going to do is then we're going to go with the first solution, which is this one. Awesome. So the question was, find x in terms of r. And we did. That's it. I think this is a good point to stop. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the video. I hope you enjoyed it, right? Well, I enjoyed doing it. So hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.